Yes, November 25th today, and we're going to do some oxalic acid vaporization treatment here. These bees, for the most part, still have a little bit of brood in them, but we're going to do it anyway because they're getting sold in a couple days. I uh, thought I'd give this guy one oxalic treatment before I gave him the bees. And these are the bees I showed in last week's video, getting ready to go to Florida and uh, they're not going to go broodless in Florida anyway so we might as well uh, give him a treatment now and give him a little bit of help. I know he'll be treating with something down there in short order. Those Florida beekeepers treat quite a bit more often than we do up here. Um, it's cold morning. Sun is just coming up right now I think. It's out there somewhere and it's about 40 degrees, 39, 40 degrees, which is pretty good temperature. Uh, the ideal temperatures for doing this vaporization are between 40 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit in my view. The reason for that is that you don't want to be, you don't want it to be so cold that the bees are clustered tightly. That way the vapors can uh, penetrate the cluster but you don't want to be so warm that they're flying so that's how I come up with 40 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit I suppose if you had to have the perfect temperature it'd probably be around 44 or 45 degrees Fahrenheit we're giving these guys 4 grams each and one of the reasons for the full 4 grams is we're not uh, putting rags at the entrance if we were sticking a rag at the entrance right away as soon as we treated 3 grams would probably be ample I've been looking at this uh, the concentration of vapors closely and I think the point of diminishing returns is just a little bit past three grams per box. In other words, three grams is better than two, but when you get to four, it's not very much better, much more effective than three. So I think as far as uh, efficiency goes, three, three and a half grams is probably the sweet spot. You having fun yet, John? Oh yeah, yes, <laughs> We are using those yellow insulator, silicone insulator thingies on top of the tool. They're kind of expensive for what they are, but they do seem to help a little bit. Show me that tool up close. The just tool. just hold it right there. I want to show something we've done. Hold it up right here. The tool. The, oh, this okay. thing, yeah. We have bent the, uh, the brass fitting in the front to be more conducive to using with our 3 8 entrances. Um, we just bent it a little bit. And if, uh, because it was cocked up just a little too much with the 3 8 entrances, it worked. That little bend, that little bend, just help it be a little closer to level than it would have been. Especially with the insulator, the insulator was kind of bumping up a little too hard. I think these are actually engineered to use with three-quarter entrances, honestly. So what we're going to do, uh, the whole outfit's going to get a a real good treatment in about three to four weeks from now. We're going to do it later than normal because the bees do have a little bit of brood in them mm. because of the recent warm weather. I think the warm weather and all that pollen coming in is subsiding now so three to four weeks from now I don't expect to see much brood. That'll put us into late December and that's okay as long as it gets done. It helps a lot to put a rag in front of there. It holds some of the vapors that's why we're giving them a little heavier dose at four grams. Um, we just didn't do it this morning. Forgot about it, honestly, to be real honest. The sock works well. So the light blinks until... It was, it was going fast, it's, put, it's doing its thing, and then it'll... Uh, now it's slowing down, and then... I don't know exactly what that slow one means, but I know once it's solid, it's done. Okay. And it's 
that little bit. The only thing that this goes down is we only got two batteries and after these four run out. Yeah. Jason built this nice little carrying box for Selena and John so they could keep all their vaporizers and batteries in one box, keep everything organized. As you can see, we have four vaporizers. These are the Instant Vap Compact units, and we have eight batteries. So while four units are burning, we can have four batteries being charged or in backup. We're using pretty good batteries. We went with the Milwaukee unit because these batteries have a reputation for charging very fast. And they say you can charge up to 50% in just 15 minutes. And in this instance, I think that's probably something that's important. We use these two chargers. You can have two on each one. These chargers draw four amps each, so they can run with a 1,000 watt inverter if you so choose. We have a 2000 watt Honda generator already, so we've just chosen to go that route. We keep it on the truck with all this stuff. And uh, it can run while they're uh, working in the yard. You, they even sometimes leave it run on the truck bed when they're going from yard to yard. No big deal, it's a very quiet generator and it can be charging batteries while in transportation. Um, we like these compact units. Um, I actually went this route on the recommendation I got from Cayman Reynolds, he likes them too. They make a bigger unit, and if I remember correctly, I, I think I heard Carrie in one of Ian Stepler's videos saying that she preferred the bigger one. Could have been because it warmed up quicker, I'm not sure, it's been a while since I watched that video. So some people may choose to go that route. We're happy with these compacts, they work pretty good. Let's see. You can see here, let's look at this closer. You can see here, now we bent that nozzle just a little bit. You can't bend it too much or it'll break on you. And that's all it took to make this unit a little easier to use with a 3 8 entrance. Um, we have been using ProVaps in the past, they work too, and there's pros and cons to both. I think these units are actually a little quicker. And one of the drawbacks of these units is that nozzle is not a straight shot into the bowl. And uh, if you get that thing clogged up, it's a little more difficult to unclog than a ProVap. So our uh, answer to that is to clean them out, steam clean them after every use, every yard. And so far we've had zero issue with that. I'll link a video at the end of this video that shows how we do that. I made a video earlier this summer when we first got started using these. So far, so good. We're happy. Um, something that I think is important is what type of oxalic acid you choose to use. We're using something that is supposed to have, supposed to assay at a minimum of 99.6% pure, right there. And it actually came through on this one at 99.8, that's a good place. And this is the company we purchased it from, Savannah, Georgia. If you're in the southeast, you might choose to go with these folks. So far, we've had good luck with them. They get it out right away, seems to be no issues at all. This is the second time we've used them. There's the price and the freight for those four bags. Um, let's see, what else can I say? Um, I'll show the four bags, show what they look like. Well, the four bags, which are 55 pounds each, will last us a year. We can uh, get through the winter, all the vaporization, and then have plenty in the spring for doing the extended acid release pads that we have shown in earlier videos, and even have extra if we need to do any kind of vaporization uh, for any reason later in the season. So I think we're ready to go, honestly. We're going to do two, at least, perhaps three treatments. Um, some of the bees still have a little brood in them. Some have gone broodless. And then later on, it could be just the opposite. Some of the ones that have brood now could be broodless, and the broodless now could have some brood. So 
just depends on the weather and the temperatures. We just entered a cold period. Uh, this morning I woke up to uh, the thermometer on my porch saying 17 degrees Fahrenheit. The bees will not be gathering any kind of pollen in that type of weather. And that's been the problem. They've been bringing in a little pollen. So it's supposed to be cold all week for the next seven to 10 days. So I think the brood rearing is gonna come to a halt. And in a few weeks, we should have a bunch of broodless colonies and we'll hit it hard. Of course, we'll spot check. We wanna make sure that uh, we know what we're doing. If we don't get them when they're broodless, it's not as effective because uh, a lot of mites are hiding in the brood, of course. I'll go over to the office here and show the bags that came in. These are the four bags that just came in. 25 kilograms, a little over 50 pounds, probably 55 pounds or so and 99.6 uh, minimum. I think that's important and the reason is if it's got a low purity you're going to have a lot of minerals and things that can clog up your tool. And oddly enough some of the brands that are actually been okayed to use are not as pure as some of the stuff you can get just from a chemical company.